Have you ever wondered why some cybersecurity teams seem to have it all figured out, repelling attackers left and right while other teams seem to be struggling a little bit more? I'm here to tell you that's not just luck, but a series of fundamental activities that are executed with precision on a daily basis. And that's what makes the difference between the world-class cybersecurity operations teams and the ones that might be struggling. In this video series, we're gonna break down what those fundamental activities are so that you can make sure your team is working at peak performance. Hello, my name is John Hubbard and I am a senior instructor at the SANS Institute and author of LDR 551, Building and Leading Security Operations Centers and SEC 450, Blue Team Fundamentals. And my approach to teaching is all about breaking down complex cybersecurity problems into simple to understand mental models. And in this video series, we're gonna be walking through what those models are. So make sure you're subscribed to the SANS Institute YouTube channel so that you can see every part of this video series as it continues to come out. Let's get going. All right, so item number one. In professional sports, winning is everything. There is huge money, careers, and lifetimes worth of training on the line. So coaches and players are looking for any advantage that they can possibly get over the opposing team. Did you know that there's entire software packages that record and help teams understand what they're going to be getting into when they play another team? In cyber defense, we would call this threat intelligence. It tells you what to expect from those who are going to be knocking on your door, those attackers trying to break into your organization. And we wanna make sure that we know as much as we possibly can about them. So one of the things you wanna think about is, do I have high quality relevant sources of threat intelligence? And are they driving my activities? In other words, are they helping me prioritize the defensive resources I have to get in the way, spot and stop cyber attacks before they happen? Number two, have you ever played a game of chess? If you're a chess player, you know that protecting your queen is one of the most important things that you can do. It is that critical resource that you have on the board and is one of your most strong assets if you keep it there and in play. As an organization, you have to think about and understand what your most important assets are and make sure that those can stay in place so your business can continue to operate. In cybersecurity, we are there to help a business continue to operate. And if you don't understand what those critical systems are, then it's impossible to protect them. So the second item that top cybersecurity teams truly and deeply understand is what are the business critical systems in the environment? What are the critical users, the admins, the VIPs, the people that use these systems that if their account became compromised, will become an enormous deal and might lead to a headline generating breach. If you don't know where your most important data is, how are you going to defend it? So number two is making sure that you know if a system is attacked, how critical is that system to your business? And this comes through configuration management databases and other things like that that help you track where that critical data is, what those critical systems are that could cause an enormous problem if they are taken down or intruded upon. If you wanna test this, ask your cybersecurity team, what are the most important servers that we have? What are all of the systems involved with our manufacturing process, with keeping our hospital online, anything like that, right? The team should know those answers. Number three is an incredibly important one and one that I see a lot of cybersecurity teams miss. Now, we already know that it's important to know the final goal, those business critical systems, but what about the systems upstream from those? In other words, how would an attack potentially happen in your environment from the start to the end? Have you ever walked backwards from an assumed attacker goal to the path that they would have to follow to get there. If you do that, you not only have an idea of what the end systems are, but all of the systems leading up to that so that you can get an early warning sign. This is called threat modeling, and every team should be doing this. What is the earliest thing that we can detect that is an indicator that we might have a mega breach in the works? Work backwards from the end and see if your team can figure it out. If you have those three things in place, you have cyber threat intelligence telling you how attackers work, you have that organizational knowledge telling you what's the most important priorities, and you have a threat model telling you how an attack might actually happen, you can put that all together to come up with a plan for collection of the most important information. A SOC cannot possibly detect any attack if they don't have the logs to show them it's happening. You have to have the data to detect the attack. And so this brings me to the first, what we call atomic function of a SOC, and that is collection. Are you collecting the logs that you need to have to spot the biggest kinds of attacks that might be coming your way. Those are the preconditions to getting it right, and that logging and collection is one of the core items that I see a lot of teams struggle with. They're either not collecting logs at all, collecting too many logs, or not sure what logs are the most important. With that attack map, and threat intelligence and organizational understanding, you can spend your limited resources and time focusing on the things that are most likely to cause the most damage. Prioritization is the name of the game here. So what questions should we be asking ourselves to understand if we got this right? 
Well, ask your team, are we getting all of the logs for all of our critical assets? That's a very basic table stakes item for cybersecurity teams. But just theoretically collecting them is one thing. Are you understanding, parsing, and making the most of those logs? When those logs come into your SIM, are you actually doing the parsing, or is it just a raw log that you're not getting any extra value out of? Do you know what the attacks look like in those logs? Do you know if those log sources go down? It all starts with the fundamental ability to collect logs, and that starts and is fed by your knowledge on what logs are the most important. So with those four things, those are some of the most critical items at the very front that the top cybersecurity teams need to focus on. Cyber threat intelligence, organizational introspection, threat modeling, and logging is just the beginning of the story though. What about detection? What about triage? What about investigation? What about incident response? These are the other atomic functions of a SOC that any world-class team needs to pay equal attention to in order to find success in cyber defense. So stick with us as we go through this video series and thanks for watching.